In this video, I will show you how to track when a mouse hovers on website elements, and we will do that with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Hey, my name is Julius, and this is Analytics Mania, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. This video is a little different compared to other tutorials on this channel. Occasionally, I do live streams exclusively for students of my Google Tag Manager course. You can call them Q&A sessions or office hours. During these sessions, I answer questions, I share my screen, I show various tutorials on the spot. Basically, if you have questions and you are my student, you get answers during those live stream sessions. This video that you are currently watching is actually a clip from one of those sessions where I was asked about hover tracking. So if you want to learn Google Tag Manager properly, you want to see the whole picture of Google Tag Manager, you want to do it fast, and you want to have a mentor that will support you along the way, then check out my courses. I will post the link below the video. In the meantime, let's learn how to track mouse hovering on various website elements with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Okay, so question number five is, is GTM able to track when a user hovers uh, over an element but doesn't click? Yes, you can do that, but this is not a built-in feature of Google Tag Manager, so you will need to add some uh, custom listener and configure it. So let me just quickly show you how to do that. Um, first of all, there are several solutions, but uh, from ones that I've tried, I recommend going to uh, David Vallejo's uh, blog posts. So you find on thinkster.com, you will find a blog post about tracking hover intent with Google Tag Manager. So basically what are we going to do right now is that when a visitor hovers on something, well, I don't have any buttons, but let me just quickly check. Maybe I can find some button. Let's imagine that you want to track not only when someone adds to cart, I mean, clicks the button, but you also want to track how many people have hovered the mouse on a button because maybe in some cases people hover their mouse and they don't click. So you can calculate the difference or at least know how many people are at least very close to a click and then how many people have actually clicked the button and then you can compare and well, maybe this will give you some insights. Usually in my cases, I don't track hover uh, intents, but maybe in your case that is uh, valuable. Okay. so. When you go to this blog post, I will also post the, the link to a chat. Um, so when you go to this article, you will find this code. So we need to copy this entire code. This is the code of a listener. Uh, then go to Google Tag Manager and create a new tag for that listener. This code doesn't have the script tags at the end and at the beginning. So we will need to add that. And Google Tag Manager is loading really slowly. Oh, okay, tag configuration, then custom HTML and enter the opening script tag, paste the code and then this closing script tag. Uh, fire this uh, on DOM ready because this listener will be looking for elements that are on a page. So those elements are on a page when the when the page document loads. That's why we need to choose not all pages, but we need to create a new trigger, which is DOM ready and this means that the elements on the page are rendered by the browser and they are ready to be accessed. So I'm ready. Uh, but this is not enough because this code is like a gun, but we need to uh, add some bullets to this gun. And what we need to do is that we need to somehow instruct this uh, this code to listen only to hovers of certain elements, because if this listener will track hover on every element, this will be way too much overwhelming. So what we could do is that we could, we need to uh, instruct this code to listen only to hovers of those elements that are actually important to us. So what we could do is that we need to go to, once again, to David's um, blog post, then we have another code. So this is like, um, like a command to start tracking to start tracking certain elements. And I will explain what it does. So copy this command, go to Google Tag Manager, and at the very end, right before the script, you can add this code. So this is a, com a command which is called track hover intent. And then we need to instruct what kind of element are we interested in, or maybe multiple elements. And then also how many milliseconds does, uh, does a mouse must stay on that element, I mean, to hover above that element, in order to track the hover intent. Because like if we added like, I don't know, a hundred milliseconds, this means that, you know, just 
a random hover like this would count as a hover. But we don't want to do that. We want to track, let's say, when a visitor hovers at least for one and a half seconds. That's why the default in this code is 1500 milliseconds, which is one and, a half, one and a half seconds. So in this part, we need to enter a thing called CSS selector. Now, this is quite an advanced topic, especially for beginners. And in my intermediate course, uh, I have a separate module that explains that topic and gives you more tips how to learn that better. So uh, I will not dive deeper in this uh, Q&A session about them because, well, we don't have enough time. So if you have access to the intermediate course, definitely go check it, that out. Uh, right now, I will just give you like the, the very, very, very basic example to be able to apply to in our example. So when I go back to our website, and once again, I want to track, let's say when, or you know what? Let's track a hover of this image because this image, well, I actually like when I, when I mean, when I go as a visitor, I hover my mouse and this works as a zoom in of a product. So uh, let me just quickly inspect this element. And in this case, what I see is that this is a, an image and the class is zoom IMG right here. I'm not sure if you see that I can zoom in. So this is the image and the class is zoom IMG. So what we could do is that we can write a CSS selector because CSS selector basically is a pattern that allows you to pick certain elements on a page, but you need to follow a certain syntax. So for example, in this case, we want to create a CSS selector that uh, will pick an image. So this is an image element, but only that image of which class is zoom IMG. And to do that, we need to follow a certain, um, certain syntax. That's why we need to go to Google Tag Manager and replace this part with, a, remove the thumbnail and enter a zoom IMG. Now, what does this selector mean? The IMG means the element, the dot means the class. So like, just if you want to target an element with a class zoom IMG, you need to enter that class, but also you need to enter a dot in front of that class. So in this case, our listener is now configured. And if a visitor hovers this image for at least one and a half seconds, we uh, will treat that as an interaction. So let's uh, go to uh, the tag and rename it. So let's see HTML with just custom HTML and then name this uh, hover listener. Let's save this tag and then I will refresh the preview mode, then we'll refresh the page, my container right here. I see that my listener has fired. Now let's hover on an element and see uh, if this works. And as you can see, I kept my mouse for quite some time. So for more than one and a half seconds. And now I have an event, which is GTM hover. And then in the data layer, I can see the data that was pushed by the listener to the data layer. So for example, in this case, uh, I could send a, I don't know, an element class uh, as an event label to Google Analytics, or maybe I'm just tracking only the hovers of these images. That's why I don't need to use any variables from here. And I can just create a tag right here that will uh, send an event and category will be hover and action can be product image and then I would add a trigger right here. So for speaking of trigger, uh, right now we don't have any triggers for gtm.hover. Therefore, we need to go to triggering, create a new trigger, which is LM, a custom event and then enter gtm hover and then name the trigger. And then finally, I will create, I will add the name to the tag. So this is GA event. Um, and hover product hover, we can call it like that. I forgot to add the G settings variable. Okay. Refresh the preview mode, then refresh the page and let's hover it on, on it once again. I'm hovering GTM hover, click it. You see the event. And then if we go to real time reports and events, you will see that event right here. So hover and product image. But of course, we could pass, for example, the URL of the product because that way we will know what kind of product was like what kind of products image was hovered. 
And that is how you track mouse hovering with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. You will need to create a custom auto event listener. You will need to modify the CSS selector. And also you will need to edit the time in milliseconds. I mean, for how long do you want a mouse cursor to hover above the website element. If you want to have me as your mentor and you want to become a Google Tag Manager professional, then check out my courses below the video. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to get more tips like this one in the future, consider subscribing to my channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.